A process flowchart or flow diagram is a very important tool for process analysis. In its basic form, you can think of it as just a series of boxes and arrows that are used to pictorially depict the sequence of activities occurring within a process. Consider the following flowchart that depicts a standard process conducted in many organizations. Several versions of this humorous flowchart can be found on the internet. Here's what you do when you find yourself in trouble and need to extricate yourself. We begin at the start node. Does the stupid thing work? It does? Here's a word of advice. Don't mess with it and you'll have no problem. Oh, it doesn't work? Okay. Did you mess with it? No? That's good. But will you get in trouble anyway? No? Okay, here's what you do. Just file it. Problem solved. You will get in trouble? Oh no, you poor fool. Wait a minute. Can you blame someone else? You can? Problem solved. Oh, you're unable to find a scapegoat. You poor fool. You're cooked. Let's go back to did you mess with it? You did mess with it? You stupid idiot, what were you thinking? Shh, does anyone know? Nobody knows? Good, hide it. Problem solved. What? Someone knows? Oh no, you poor fool. This time you're really cooked. As you can see from this example, we have simply laid out the steps in the process in a logical manner. Our flowchart provides us a pictorial method to communicate the flow of our process to the reader. We might have used different shapes, such as triangles, circles, pentagons, or any other symbol we wanted. But given that we are trying to communicate something, it is useful to adopt a common language and follow a common convention of symbols. Typically, the starting and ending points need to be identified clearly using a symbol called a terminator. The process activities are depicted using rectangular boxes. The diamond shapes are used to identify divergence points, such as a yes-no question, with each answer leading to a different path. In addition to these basic symbols, a vast array of symbols can be found depending on the flowchart application that conveys meanings useful in that context. A couple of very useful additions to a basic flowchart are swim lanes and the line of visibility. Swim lanes are bands drawn on the flowchart that indicate functional or departmental boundaries. Consider this example. This flowchart is based on a case given in the textbook. All the process activities that are conducted within a particular department are shown within that departmental band, making it easy for each department to identify what activities it needs to fulfill. As well, it becomes easy for everybody concerned to identify the department responsible for each activity. So if I have a problem, I know exactly whom I should contact. More importantly, from a process analysis perspective, any time a process crosses from one department to another, there is a huge opportunity for things to fall between the cracks. Therefore, every point in the flowchart that a line crosses a swim lane is an immediate opportunity to look for process problems. A line of visibility is particularly useful for a service process with high customer contact. You can think of the line as dividing the flowchart into two bands. All the activities that are visible to the customer are in one band, while all the other activities are in the other band. Simply put, any step that is visible to the customer must be designed with the customer in mind. Consider, for example, a restaurant. Think of the dining area, the plush carpeting, nice tablecloth, fancy wall decorations, mellow lighting, the soft music, the sharply dressed waitstaff, etc. 
Now let us go behind the line of visibility and open the door that says employees only beyond this point. Flash carpeting or tile floor easy to scrub. Tablecloth or stainless steel counter. Fancy wall decorations or kitchen utensils. Mellow lighting or flood lighting. Fancy clothes or stained aprons. You can see that the line of visibility plays a key role in determining how we design these different steps in the process. The basic purpose of a flowchart is to pictorially document the process. A flowchart can be drawn at the big picture level to give us a view of things from 35,000 feet up in the air. Zooming in a little bit, it can also be created at a medium level. Zooming in much more, it can also be created at a minute detail level. But why document a process when we all know it and have even committed it to memory? Let me give you an example of a faculty meeting at our school where we undertook the job of creating some flowcharts. The flowcharts were not for us, of course, because we all knew the processes like the backs of our hands. The flowcharts were to provide a visiting accreditation team a quick glance at the things we did. That was a pretty easy task. After all, we were living and breathing these processes on a daily basis. Guess what happened at that meeting? The moment one person said, here is how we do this, another person disagreed. That's not how I do it, or that's not how we do it in our department. Was that a simple task? Absolutely not. And that is the fact with most processes. Each person working on it has a different understanding of it. And that view is, of course, not the same as what the designers of the process had in mind. Without a unified understanding of the process among all participants, you can imagine why process variability is going to be high. Process documentation is, therefore, a crucial part of understanding the process. A flowchart being a visual documentation of the process, it provides an even more powerful mechanism for putting everyone on the same page. A picture is worth a thousand words. While process documentation is often a huge achievement in itself, it is barely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to process analysis. The greatest benefit of process documentation is that it enables process analysis and process improvement. So now that we have put together our fine process flowchart, what do we do with it? We display it, ask for comments, sit around the campfire discussing it, and then tear it apart. Why? Because we just found a better way to conduct the process. Wait a minute, are you going to tear up this nice flowchart already? I just spent weeks putting it together. Then I made a poster, laminated it, and put it up on display. If you have any suggestions for improvement, I suggest you hold off on them for at least three months. After that, we'll come back and redo the flowchart. Think about what that means. In our very attempt to begin process analysis by documenting our process, we have created inertia that is going to impede any process changes. Now, without process changes, how do we expect process improvements? Good question, isn't it? We want improvement, but we don't want change. As you can imagine, the more rigid our process documentation mechanism, the more inertia we will have, and the less useful the documentation is going to be. What we need is a really nimble process documentation mechanism, where we are able to document today's process, tear it up tomorrow, and quickly document the modified process. Not just documented, but also implemented. That is, roll it out as the new standard operating procedure, and train and bring everyone up to speed. Without such a nimble mechanism, neither PDCA, nor Kaizen, nor DMAIC will work effectively. How many of you remember typewriters? You spend hours typing up a document and finalize it. Just when it's done, 
Some quirky employee comes up with an improvement suggestion. Let's all beat up that employee. He or she is just making life difficult for the rest of us. Who needs process improvement after all? On the other hand, suppose we have our final document created using a word processor. A quirky employee? No problem. We can modify the document instantly and update our web page within hours. Rather than beat up that employee, let's give him or her an award for coming up with a process improvement suggestion. In that context, process flowcharting software can be used to make our documentation mechanism more nimble. We can create, modify, demolish, and recreate flowcharts with much greater ease. A good example of such software is Microsoft Visio. The remainder of this presentation provides a tutorial on using Visio.